Welcome back. While Canada reckons with its legacy of residential schools, a closer look shows that many issues in Indigenous education persist today. City News Ottawa reporter Shaoli Lee with more. And the federal government funds these. And what we've known is that many of the schools, the parliamentary budget officer says, are in very poor condition. In fact, we have had some schools that don't even have a reliable source of water. Only 35% of First Nations homes have broadband access in the middle of a pandemic. She's one of Canada's most prominent voices for First Nations children and youth. Now Cindy Blackstock says in the aftermath of the discovery of student remains at the Kamloops Indian Residential School, Canada must now deal with both the legacy of residential schools and the present reality of First Nations education. There's inequalities in terms of the um, education funding itself, funding for libraries, equipment, teacher salaries, those kinds of things. Because they are funding at lower levels than the rest of the country, the opportunity or at least the prospect for them to enter into post-secondary education is considerably lowered. In 1996, the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples had a funding plan to close the educational gap for First Nations within 20 years. But then Finance Minister Paul Martin instead cut funding for the then Department of Indian and Northern Affairs. A non-Indigenous uh, child once told me, they said, you know what discrimination is? Discrimination is when the government doesn't think you're worth the money. So what would it feel like if you were one of those kids who wasn't worth the money? Or the parent of a child who wasn't worth the money? That's the lived reality of First Nations children today. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. And coming up next here on Breakfast Television, we're going to break uh, the latest numbers down with COVID-19. Good news, lower numbers across the board. Bad news, one key figure is rising. We'll bring that to you next.